Malkin Blues, perhaps the best Savoy Row cutter today. A go-to guy if you have a very difficult cutting task on Savoy Row. Tailor to Prince Charles. I made an interview with him not long ago. I think it's good. Try watching it. But my father was quite strict and said, look, you know, if you're not going to do well at school, you've got to learn a trade. Anyway, this local family business, which was, you know, lovely bespoke tailors um, and outfitters, uh, was advertising for an apprentice. So I went down and uh, had an interview and actually got the job. Yes. We, had, we were on a, a, a six months um, trial, and uh, which we had to do in those days before you actually signed up. Yes. And uh, after the first week, I loved it. It was a, a long apprenticeship. Yes. Five years. Yes. And was that um, the tailoring only? And then that was only tailoring. Yes. And then you had to do also you had to do another two years as an improver. Yes. But you know, after I'd been there a little while, I decided that I wanted to learn cutting. So I used to have it. I used to. Uh, they used to allow me a day release to come to London to Shoreditch College. It was called in those days. It was Shoreditch College for the clothing industry. Yes. And it taught cutting and tailoring and uh, uh, study of textiles. Was that um, common in those days that you went to school to learn cutting, that you didn't go to a, a cutter or a, a Well, well, you, you used to go to, you go to a college, yes. to like Shoreditch College, to learn the basics. Mm -hmm. Then you had to get in with somebody, in, in with a firm. Mm -hmm. I was in my second year with this, with this uh, company. I just won the uh, college shield for the best student of the year. Uh, which done me a bit of good, really. Um, but my the governor of that business died, and um, Geeves yes uh, took over. They bought the business, um, but it was Geeves then. It wasn't Geeves and Hawks. Yes, Geeves were in then. They were then in twenty seven Old Bond Street because. Everybody talks about Savile Row, but back in the days, yes, you know, back in the early '60s, mm -hmm. uh, the whole of uh, it was like a square mile yes. of uh, streets. This street, Sackville Street, Myra Mortimer have always been here, but um, this street was full of tailors. Yes, and so was Savile Row, and so was. Cork Street, yes, and you know, as I say, Geeves and Hawks were twenty-seven Old Bond Street, yes, and anyway, I think because I won the shield for the college, and you know, they they sort of looked into my um, the way I was working. They said we we would like you to come to London, but in actual fact, I was a little bit disappointed with the quality okay. of tailoring in yes. in London. In Is that those right? days, yeah. yes, it, we were we were producing much uh, much more. Um, there was more volume than quality. Yeah, there was much much better quality uh, in in tailoring. It uh, it probably didn't pay. That you know, Frederick Gow was the, the the name of the little company that we we worked for. It. I think the the outfitting side carried the carried the tailoring side because I think it was done. You know, there was too much handwork, if you know what I mean. It okay. Was, it was almost um, all made by hand, basically, okay. without um, uh, with the exception of uh, the main seams, which were side seams, back seam, um, okay. shoulders. Sleeves, everything like yes. that was done by hand. And perhaps also, how has the how has the seven row suit changed? Well, not very much, no. really. A, a, a pure seven row suit still is 
is is is basically along the same lines as when I was at an apprentice. The there's not too many companies, if any, these days that do collars, collars and sleeves by hand. No. They, uh, um, or shoulders and no. sleeves by hand because um, I think cutting has become more technical. Yes. Uh, I think cutting is is is, is cleverer. Okay. Now. It's better cutting. It's, it's better cu better cutting. Yeah. But I think tailoring has mm -hmm. cut corners a little bit yes. since since I was an apprentice, you know. Yes. Um, but there's still some great craftsmen about. And uh, I mean, if you insisted uh, on doing handwork on shoulders and sleeves, I'm sure, uh, you know, the top top cut makers would still yes. do it. They'd probably... They'd probably charge you a bit yes, more, yes, but, yes. but you know. Um, but with the, as I say, with the technical side, with the cutting side, it's not as necessary to to have shoulders and sleeves by hand. No. I think in a way we've learnt we've learnt cutting skills from multiples. Yes. You know because they they've they've. You know they they can afford to play around mess about with with uh, a particular design for maybe months yes but the difference is with us the customer comes in he wants this particular style you've got to do it in one there's yeah. no, no you don't get a second chance no. it's 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 got to be right and uh well i think you know a cutter that is dealing with um individuals uh, uh, is, is, has got more experience on figures, you know, on, on people's figure and yes. on measurements and where those measurements apply. Yes. Because, uh, you know, factories can't do that. No, no. I know they say they've got these computers that will do this and do that and do something else, but <laughs> no two customers are the same. No. They can no. measure the same. Yes. But it depends where those measures are made up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a chest size, for, yeah. a chest size, for instance, if he's 42, mm. he could take most yeah. of that size on the back. Yeah. Another, the other guy may yeah. take most of it on the chest. Yes. So you've got to be able to uh, determine when you measure a customer, you have to look at their figuration and make sure that you understand the figuration. Yeah. It does help these days. We've got these these um, wonderful phones and, yes. and that take photographs. That's quite useful. The other thing you've got to get them to do is relax. Yeah. It's no good. You know, cause, but, no, no, because you know, I, I think it, it's just a natural thing that when mm -hmm. somebody says, "Oh, we'd like to take a photo of you," straight away they. Yeah. You know, they stand up straight. Yeah. I mean, we all do it. Yeah. But you've got to try and you've got to try and relax them. Yes. And 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 say, look, you know, it's going to make you look good anyway. Yeah. Let's make you look good. Relaxed. Yeah. The natural. You're not going to be yeah. walking around like a soldier. That's let's yes. just relax and we 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 get you. <laughs> yeah. And what about the education system, the apprentices? Well, uh, I. I <laughs> What do you I think, think about I think it's improving, yes. but I think there's a big black hole okay. in in apprenticeships, mm -hmm. where the where governments uh, education was, was just saying to every every youngster, um, you know, you got to get a degree, you got to get a degree in this, you got to get a degree in that. Yes, it not everybody is is capable no. of doing that. And you know, some people are better with their hands. Yes. Which which I was. Um, and you know, there there weren't. You know, when I was young, we used to have uh, um, in the school before we left. We used to have um, career officers used to come round and give you all these different ideas. I mean, you could go in the forces. Um, you could go uh, uh, as a bricklayer. Uh, uh, you, know, you were offered um, a choices of of lots of trades. Yes. 
then all of a sudden that all went out the window and it was oh no everybody's going to have a degree yeah they've all got a, they're all we're all going to be scientists yes, brain yes. surgeons you know, but, but that isn't it, it, it isn't possible no people aren't all the same how do people uh, learn to tailoring how do they learn to cut today well it's hard, to... i think it's harder than when i was okay around, it's harder. because they're there, there, there aren't the amount of um, tailoring businesses about left okay. uh, proper. No, I spoke. I mean, you look at Savile Row now. There's, you, you could count on one hand yeah. the real yeah. bespoke tailors up there. A lot of designer names there, yes. and uh, you know, there's a lot of what I call made to measure, yes. which are calling themselves bespoke, yeah. um, which they can do because we lost. Uh, the court case on on yes. trying to keep it uh, only to Savile Row standard. Um, so it's very difficult for customers when they walk down Savile Row because if they walk in certain shops, they're not getting a Savile Row suit. No. What my advice to any uh, client that was looking for a, a Savile Row suit would, would, would be to do is. Um, to research, yes, they were all proper, yes, bespoke Savile Row tailors. Yes, uh, I mean, a few names come to mind. I mean, you know, Edward Sexton, yes, was a great, he's a great cutter, yeah, uh, Roy Chittleborough, yes, um, who uh, both of those cutters, Edward and Roy, worked for Tommy Nutter, yes. Now, Tommy Nutter was not a cutter, no. He was a designer and a very good one. But what really Tommy scored and was really good for Savile Row was he was a great designer, but he he done his homework and he found the best cutters, the best coat makers, and you know he was a, he was a great designer and he, he turned out some fantastic stuff. Yes. Um, that was, you know, that opened the eyes to to men's fashion. Really, I mean, I was, I I, I started off from nothing basically um, against, you know, I was competing with all these big shots like Henry Paul, Deej, yes. you, you know, all these these guys that have been going. These companies have been going for a long, long time, and. Uh, Everybody said you, you must be mad, yeah. you know, starting up on your own. And uh, I said, well, can only go two ways, up or down. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, you know, well, fortunately, I had. I, I mean, I'd done 12 years in this little shop that I yes. was able to uh, to um, uh, get hold of. And. Uh, um, but the developers came in, yes. and we all had to get out, and that included Edward, and well, it included all, almost all one side of Savile Row. But there's lots of companies that aren't in Savile Row that are still, mm. you know, good, yes. producing really good stuff. You know, you've got around in George Street, you've got um, uh, Denham and Goddard. Yes. Um, they, you know, they produce. You know, yeah. yeah, they they produce good work. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, here. Yes. And up here. Yes. You know, we these, you know, these sort of companies are are, are the true bespoke tailors. From, from a client's perspective, what what's the difference? Or for for uh, if if a client should, if you go to one of the very established houses, uh, big old houses, what what. Is the difference between going to one of the established houses or, and to one, or to one of the small tailors in terms of service or make or how do you look or is it? Uh, well, I guess you, I'm a bit I'm a bit biased yeah. because I'm in one man business now, yes. and um, <clears throat> I think I give because I I I see the customer when he comes in the shop, mm -hmm. and I look after him throughout. You know, from the choosing of the material to the measuring, I, I, I choose which coat maker will be good for him, because some coat makers build a good chest. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Yes. Uh, but if, if if it's somebody that's sort of like 
quite skinny and concave. Mm. You don't want you don't want a great big chest worked up on him um, because it, it anyway it just yes. didn't look, it, it just wouldn't look right. So you, you've got to pick your coat makers for your for your your clients as well. And and you deal with one person right the way through. Yes. The bigger companies, which I've got to. I've got to operate this way because the, it, 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 it's not possible to do otherwise. But no, they don't even know who the cutter is. They'll, they'll have a they'll they'll have a salesman yes. who is the first contact, who normally ends up selling the cloth, uh, and then calling the cutter forward to measure. I like to be involved in the choosing of the cloth mm. because salesman tend to go to uh, the most expensive, which is not necessarily good for that client. My main thing about all tailoring is quality and fit. Yes. If you've got those two things, you, you're going to look immaculate. Yes. Whatever you, whatever you accessorize with, and some people are better at accessorizing than, than others. And this is where, this is where the bigger shops um, play a good part. Mm. They've got good salesmen yes. that that are good at picking out yes. shirts, ties, handkerchiefs, cufflinks, whatever. Yes. Um, I'm lucky. I've got a lot of customers that are really good at it, at doing it themselves. Yes. You know, they normally get a little bit of um, a little bit of the fabric from me. They go to Turnbull and Asa. Um, they will order their shirts there, they buy their ties, um, which, which helps my job. Yes. Learn how to draft a pattern. Yes. In all sizes. Mm -hmm. But as you as you get on, the, the 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 best way is to is to get get. You, well, it, 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 it's trial and error, obviously. When you, you know, if you some some cutters draft a pattern for every customer. If you're very busy, that takes a long time. The, the, my personal feeling over this is, I I, I really believe that that a, a cutter should learn to draft properly. Yes. But then he should concentrate on perfecting a set of blocks from 36 to 48. And you, what you do with a with a block when you measure a customer, you take the, you, you take the figuration. You then take the block that is that you feel is closest to him. Then you add the figuration. Yes. You still cut a pattern, but you're using a template, and you manipulate the template to that customer's um, facilities, really, yes. you know, to his figure. It then becomes his pattern. When you have a fitting, you take your fitting, you rip it down. You, you should always have your, your pattern with you. Yes. When you do this, because paper doesn't stretch or shrink, or but cloth does. So you need to check very carefully whether it's the cloth that's out of kilter, if it's come up big or it's come up small, or if it's your pattern. Because if you just go by the fitting, and you, you know the fitting has come up big, so you start pinning it in. Yes. And yeah, it'll be nice when when it's all finished. But if the customer reorders, and you think, oh, I've got a good pattern here. I'll cut another one. It may yeah. come up too small. Yes. Because the, the 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 pattern wasn't right, and and. Or the, or the fitting wasn't right, but the, you know, the pattern was. Yeah. So it's very important when you're marking up a job after the fitting to have it by the side of you so you can check, you know, if, you, if your cross waist is, is on the customer, came too, 
22 and a half, yes. you measure that against your pattern. If your, pa if your pattern's only measuring uh, 20, there's a half an inch yes. discrepancy here somewhere. Yes. So, um, so what, what do you think of this? I heard a few tailors uh, or two, a few cutters uh, who use this, uh, they call it rock of eye. Sort of well, rock of eye, we all use it. Yeah, you all it, use it. It's sort of. But what it is, I mean, rock of eye is is more on styling yes. than actual uh, than actual uh, precision in in measurement. Yes. It, it what it is is more to do with it's, it's more to do with the the lines that you yeah. want. You know. Um, you know there are there are certain sticks and things that you can buy that yes. you can use as a as a guide, mm -hmm. but I think after a, after a good few years of, of of you know making patterns and 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 re recutting and things like that, you get a bit of chalk and you 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 become very your eye yes. basically becomes uh, very clever in in getting beautiful lines yes. and that is what is rock of eye yes it means that you're <laughs> so it's part you're of you're able thinking. yeah you're, yeah you're, well it, yeah it, do you it, know use a block pattern you always have a rock of eye or, or, or well i mean your block pattern should be should be really good yes and uh if it if um when you're making them you would yeah. probably use rock of eye yes, yes. in getting lovely smooth lines and and you know any any two any two uh, seams that join together mm -hmm. should be compatible. Yes. You know I've seen yeah. over the years so many um, cutters where you know the the fore part has got a lovely shape, the back is as straight as a die. Mm -hmm. To get those two things together is almost impossible. Yes. You've got to have. Lines that will um, flow together. You know, you'll get a much better look um, than trying to force yes. uh, one straight and one curved. When you look back, what's the very difficult part of a, of a fitting, uh, the first fitting and the second fitting? What is the, typically the, the thing that's difficult to get the first look? The first thing you look for yeah. uh, in a uh, it, when you're trying a first fitting on yeah. is balance. Yes. Get the balance. The balance is the most yeah. important thing on a coat. Yeah. Um, the other thing is style, and and uh, and obviously the the thing that hits most people is collar, shoulders, and sleeves. Yes. You know because that is the direct look from the from the customer and it should be from the cutter as well you, you know you, that is where you're yes. focused the rest of it is just gentle styling 